This is the greatest LEGO playscale TIE Fighter to ever exist. Let me tell you why. This LEGO Star Wars TIE Fighter was originally released for the Han Solo movie. It originally retailed for about $70, comes with four minifigures, and the best scaling of a TIE Fighter I have ever seen in playscale. It looks so good. Let's jump into the review. Starting off with the TIE Fighter at the wing, you can see just how perfectly shaped this is. They did such a great job at making this very proportionally accurate, while also making it a fantastic shape with perfect scaling. This seems so accurate to the Lego minifigures, and looking at it with Han Solo next to it, you can see just how amazingly fantastic this scaling is and looks so good next to minifigures, which is a huge plus and something I always look for in LEGO, even though I know some people don't like that. This is one of those sets that just looks fantastic on a shelf, but is so swooshable, it's crazy. And the wing itself helps do that. The hexagonal pattern on the wing looks really good and all the plates used make a very fine look from the outside. It looks exactly the way that a TIE fighter should. There's also a nice printed piece in the middle too, just to add a little bit of detail, but there's absolutely no stickers on the set, which is another huge bonus. All of the lines on the wing look super good, but unfortunately there is a little bit of gap in the middle of the wing next to the gray line in the very center. It's somewhat unnoticeable, but from the right angle, you can see a little bit of blue popping out. This is obviously a nitpick, but I really wish LEGO would just use the same color pieces and this wouldn't happen. Blue was really not necessary to put in here. With that said, there are also some other gaps around the TIE Fighter, including the gray pieces that stem out from the middle of the wing. There are slight gaps in between them and the black plates, as well as there are gaps from the surrounding lining of the wing. It's very minimal, but it is noticeable from the side if you are looking at it closely. All of that really doesn't deter from the design of the wing, and each section of the wing's outer lining is built up all by itself, connecting it all together around it. Looks super great, very detailed detailed and is quite a fun build. I will say the inside of the wing is a little bare. You are getting complete anti-studs. There's nothing here to have a snot technique to maybe switch things around. And it also is a little bit inaccurate to not have the same gray lines popping out of the middle as we do on the outside. Even though we do have a lot of anti-stud, it looks really good. And they smoothed it off nicely to make everything look flush with itself, even if there is a little bit of depth. But it doesn't look unfinished or like there's something wrong with the TIE Fighter like other TIE Fighters have in the past. I also really like the way that they connected the wing. They made it super easy to take off and on so you could really make this fun for play while also display too. It can come off really easily and has four clips attached to the stem of the TIE Fighter as well as bars inside the wing to clip it on really nicely. From the inside of the wing you can also see a little bit of those colors that are peeking out. Again, don't know why those are there. They should have been gray or black. Any other color but tan and blue just wouldn't show through at all. Moving toward the center of the TIE Fighter on the back, we have a bunch of circular tile pieces right in the center to give this a really fantastic shape. Out from that, we get two red translucent pieces to represent the thrusters. The stems reaching out from the pot of the TIE Fighter look really good and they're designed very nicely. They're also super sturdy. So throwing this around, swinging it around, I really don't think it's gonna break and it definitely won't break too easily. From the backside, you can see my least favorite part of the build, which is the spring-loaded shooters. These aren't super intrusive and thus my least favorite part of the build really isn't even that bad, but they do stick out just a little bit from the actual chassis of the TIE Fighter. From the top side, you can see the top of the stems with a bunch of greebling and extra details. They left a few studs showing, which I appreciate just to kind of give it that Lego feel while also still making it look fantastic. Of course, up here you can see the hatch, which if we open it up can reveal the cockpit. I really like that they allowed you to open both sections at the same time and have plenty of space to throw a minifigure in here. As you can see, the TIE Fighter Pilot minifigure fits in here fantastically, but there's also some space in here for his blaster too. And it's a pretty good build, it's very basic, but it gets the job done. You can even see the TIE Fighter Pilot or the console through the glass if you look really closely, which is just a great detail that I love about this set. The front of the TIE Fighter looks great too. There isn't anything crazy about it other than just some more greebling and extra details. With all that said, I think the TIE Fighter is the best part of the set, but really the best part of all LEGO sets has to be the minifigs. And these minifigs do not disappoint at all. From what I can tell, other than maybe the TIE Fighter pilot, each of these minifigures is fairly exclusive to this set. And they are 
fantastic. All four of these minifigs come from Solo, a Star Wars story. They just look so, so good. And it makes me kind of sad that LEGO will put this much effort into figures from a movie that no one really enjoyed and not do that with their figures from other assets of LEGO Star Wars that people adore. I don't get why they did this, but I have to appreciate it nonetheless. Starting off with the TIE Fighter pilot, he looks absolutely fantastic. Of course, he is basic, just a regular minifigure TIE Fighter pilot, but looks awesome. I love the print from the legs all the way to the helmet. You can see that he's got his blaster and you can see his head. This is my least favorite part of the TIE Fighter pilot helmet. The head just looks so weird sticking out from the back. I really wish they either gave us a black head like they used to of old or just cover that up entirely. Up next, we've got Solo himself looking really great in his Imperial armor. I think this figure is probably one of the best of the sets. It is so, so detailed. The printing looks absolutely fantastic, but it looks awesome. The green that they've got splotched on there looks really good. The cape that comes in the back looks great too and is printed with a hood on it. And they even included back printing on the back of this guy. Something so unnecessary, yet so welcome for them to do. And again, it looks really good. The back is just simple, but great. The next figure we have is a figure that I thought was called a Mud Trooper, but apparently it's called a Mimban Storm Trooper. I don't really know why, but it looks like it's covered in mud. This isn't my favorite Lego Stormtrooper design, but I do think it looks really nice, and it's one of the better designs that we've seen, with fantastic printing too. A lot of the time, when there's too much printing on a figure, it can look sloppy, but this one is perfectly printed to look that way. It looks like it's sloppy, it looks like there's dirt all over him, and that's one reason why it's really fantastic. He also comes with the same Han Solo cape with the hood, which looks really great, and of course, Lego outdid themselves with the back printing on the back of this guy too. Overall, fantastic minifigure. Last and definitely not least is Beckett himself, who is just a fantastic figure to have in here in the Imperial officer form. He looks really great. His leg printing, his chest printing look awesome. I really like the way that they did all of the chest printing in the middle with the green. You can also see his rankings in there too. It's just so subtle, but really, really awesome that they got those fine details in here. His back printing is really simple, but it doesn't need to be anything crazy and it gets the job done. Let's talk about his blasters. These two blasters Lego calls special and they actually kind of are. I don't think we've ever seen these blasters again in LEGO Star Wars, and we definitely didn't see them before, but these are mini ones, which of course we get all the time. There's another one in this set, but it's in black. These ones are in silver. I can't believe LEGO went to this much detail for a character that we get in one movie. I know that these blasters really aren't that crazy, but it's just the fact that we got them at all in a different color just because. Well done, Lego. This is fantastic. This is honestly a fantastic set. It's got a great build with great minifigures. For $70, you really got a lot here. And this is a set that has proved through time that it was definitely worth the purchase. So with all that said, tell me what you think in the comments down below. Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Hit that subscribe button and like this video. It would help out the channel a ton so more people can see this. And so you can stay along with my content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.